Now, I got a huge response to our show on Sunday uh, about the number of people that have written to the Senate inquiry about cost of living, about the difficulties that they're having when it comes to their lives and particularly via petrol. You know the story, uh, including uh, Lindley. Uh, and she told this story, uh, Lindy Kay, I should say, that she doesn't go anywhere due to the cost of living pressures. She only leaves the house for essentials and goes on long stretches of time without social interactions. I don't go to the movies. I don't go out for dinner. I don't go to the pub. I used to love going out, but I've had to get used to the isolation. Other examples of people who have written to that committee... I haven't seen my family who live 800 kilometres away for three years as I can't afford $300 in the cost of fuel. I can honestly say that my state of mind is slowly deteriorating, so sad that I can't drive and see the grandkids. Another one here. Not been able to see my granddaughter due to fuel costs. I have no social life. Visiting my adult children is nearly impossible due to petrol prices. My mental health has been severely damaged. Now... When you have that sort of evidence before you, let alone the common sense that petrol prices at more than $2.30 a litre, when 50 49 cents per litre is taxed in this country, tax decided by the federal government, well, you would think there's an opportunity to ask the Prime Minister if he would cut petrol tax, go back to where he was when he became Prime Minister, which is when petrol tax was 23 cents a litre, not the best part now of 50 cents a litre. Well, today he popped up uh, in uh, a home ground game, that being ABC Radio. This one was uh, ABC AM. Now, that's him in the past turning up on ABC Radio, but I'm sure it all looks the same. This time he was on the phone. Now, despite all of the issues that we talk about, despite those that many stories where petrol prices are given as a reason why people don't leave the house or see their families, do you reckon there'd be any chance that, that when he turns up on the ABC that somebody would actually be willing to ask a question about these issues? Well, no. Instead, this was one of the priorities of the person asking the questions this morning. OK, and just uh, finally, before I, I let you go, I wanted to ask, have, have you ever experimented with altering a family photo to improve your look? Seriously? Of all the things there is to ask a Prime Minister, and I get it, I don't, I don't mind the funny little question at the end, all the rest of it, but when you don't actually engage with the issues broader than the ones that they've given you the press release to ask about, you've missed an opportunity. And certainly an opportunity has been missed here because, remember, it is the ABC themselves that are the ones who have done an awful lot of reporting about the Senate committee and the written submissions. In fact, whack up the headline because all of those examples that I've just given you about people who can't see their family, friends, leave their house, see their grandkids because of petrol prices. It's been reported by the ABC. So we know the ABC wouldn't dare comment on an exclusive story that came out from anywhere else or anyone else's hard work, anyone else's uh, follow the data, follow the dots. No, 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 that can't be discussed. But this is from within. Instead, a question about the bloody photograph of the royal family. For the record, here's the Prime Minister thinking, how good have I got this? <laughs> no, no, I haven't, David. I, I, I think I know what you're referring to there with uh, the uh, photo of the the Princess of Wales, and uh, it's uh, it's I think uh, unfor unfortunate that this has become a public issue. I think the real issue is everyone wishes uh, the princess uh, the best of health uh, for her recovery. And uh, the photo of her, her delightful children, I think, uh, was a, a very warm one. Oh, God. By the way, I saved you the back half of that answer. It goes on for another 15, 20 seconds where he starts talking about press gallery. Come on. You get such little time with these people. But you see, the way the game works is that if you want to keep this person coming back, then you don't ask them the questions they don't want you to ask. Don't bring up the issues that are bad for them. And you can see that about people when it comes to access journalism. We've talked about it, uh, about how it becomes corrosive. I've spoken in the past about my own failures. When you do get caught up in the games of access, always been honest about that as one of the flaws that inevitably comes. But I always step out of it and I see the reality that when you've got the opportunity, when you've got the Prime Minister, when he's there and he wants to talk about $4 billion worth of extra housing in Indigenous areas in the Northern Territory, great, one, two questions, but while I've got your Prime Minister... What's your message to the lady who can't leave her house because the petrol price is so high and you won't cut the taxes? Oh, of course, uh, there was no questions asked at all 
about his decision to increase petrol prices, by the way. Remember, they didn't just inherit 23 cents. They let it go back up to the mid-40s and then, due to indexation every six months, it's now at 49 cents a litre. Might ask the Prime Minister a question about that. No, 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 no way at all. What about Stephen Jones? Any chance to ask a question about the bloke who's accused of spending $43,000 on hire cars from his Shell Harbour electorate to go down to Canberra because, you know, I've got to fill out my paperwork here. Apparently he doesn't get sick in the back seat while he's filling out the paperwork. He's certainly not on the phone because it doesn't matter if you're in the front seat, the back seat, he was sitting on top of it. Like the grandmother from National Lampoon's vacation. The mobile network doesn't work for about an hour between Sydney and Canberra. Then, of course, he could have been asked about Tony Burke. Is it exactly fair, Prime Minister, when we're talking about cost of living, that your minister spends the best part of $44,000 on flights, $8,000 on cars for four days for a trip that really wasn't part of his job just so he could go to America? In the meantime, the Prime Minister is so arrogant post-Dunkley, so certain about the inevitability of his victory today, tomorrow and forevermore because Murfaroo's pouring the lefty sugar in his ear. It's all about how bad Peter Dutton is. Can you believe this is how low politics has become in Australia, that this is the Prime Minister's argument against nuclear power in a state election in 2024? Labor is the party of the light on the hill. The Liberals just want us to glow in the dark. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, you know France, Germany, the United States, how many, you know about where nuclear power exists. We'll discuss it, of course, a little bit later in the show. But for his part, Peter Dutton has challenged the Prime Minister to have a debate on this particular topic because it is about the future energy grid. OK, you want to spend a trillion dollars on renewables? Well, I want to spend maybe less than that, but I want to get us to nuclear power. Your serve. Here's Peter Dutton. I'll meet him at the press club or wherever he wants at any time. But again... The swagger of the Prime Minister, who knows he can go through interviews with friendlies, friendlies that will never ask him questions about his own record, about his own lives, about his own decisions, about his own failures when it comes to cost of living. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Cut petrol tax, Prime Minister. I know you don't want to do it because I'm suggesting it, but what about you do it because there's the lady in the bush who can't leave her house? What about you do it because they're the people who can't drive to go and see their family members? All right, I know you've got your little minions running around in the media at the moment trying to call this station, this program, me out for the incessant focus on cost of living. Well, too bad, pal. This matters. It matters to normal people and therefore we will talk about it and we will talk about it all day, every day, no matter what sludge is being pushed around in the background. For his part, the Prime Minister, well, his response to the should we have a debate... Dutton. Peter Dutton's incapable. He hasn't been to a national press club yet. Not once. He's, He's never done... He, he, he couldn't find it. He couldn't, he couldn't find it. You'd have to get him a map first and you'll have to fly down to Canberra and drive him there because he doesn't know where it is. He hasn't given a serious, a serious policy speech since he became leader of the opposition. Well, I wonder if he knows where Alice Springs is, where currently youth crime is currently rampant. You know, the place that he popped into for a couple of hours before flying down to Melbourne and spending two days at the tennis. You'd like an example of a map, Prime Minister? I can give you an app that'll take you to this place called a petrol station. You can look up and see what the price is. You were blowing up when the price was about 50, 60, 70 cents cheaper than it is right now. But, of course, that was just to get yourself to become Prime Minister. Now you've got a free fuel card. Bugger everyone else.